I'm in southern Israel right now, and these fields behind me are the only thing that is separating me from the most volatile region in the entire country. What you're looking at behind me, that's the Gaza Strip. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about what happens behind me and in front of me, because, of course, we are so close to these front lines. What you're looking at is about 350 square kilometers of land that's populated by some 2 million Muslims, Arabs, Palestinians, and they are governed and secured by a terrorist group that they democratically elected called Hamas. These fields, they are run by people who have a kibbutz. These people on the kibbutz are essentially trained as first uh, line responders for when mortar and missiles are fired into Israel. Now, about three kilometers behind my cameraman is the town of Sterot. Sterot has about 25 to 30,000 residents. And in that town, the year, maybe every half of a block, you will run into a bomb shelter. Why? Because Hamas is uh, waging a two-pronged war against the Jewish people and the nation state of Israel because it's in their constitution. One of those wars by air and one of them underground. So what happens when Hamas ends up uh, triggering a missile or a, a um, or bricks and mortar, um, or mortar rather, uh, that sets off some of Israel's uh, defense system. That then triggers an alarm that is sounded throughout the nearby towns. That then alerts the men, women and children that they have 15 seconds to find shelter. What does that mean? About 85% of Sterot's uh, youth, their young people, suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, whereas about 50% of their adults suffer from the same. Now, back home, we're told that the Gaza Strip, which is a bit of a third rail on political football, um, their people are, are not well off because of Israel's blockade. Let me tell you the truth. Egypt has closed her border, even though they are, frankly, Arabs and Muslims and should be seen as cousins and perhaps lend a helping hand to their friends under a terrorist control. Whereas Israel has left her border open for some 800 trucks to come in daily with food supplies, bricks and mortar to help build up uh, Gaza as well. The, the state of Israel supplies 70% of the electricity that is used by the people within the Gaza Strip, as well as their water supply. Important point, Israel is helping the people in Gaza so much, they have supplied them with stones and bricks and mortar to help build up their region of the world. And what's happened? Their terrorists that are charged with protecting them, with governing them, have used that bricks and mortar in order to build terror tunnels to essentially terrorize the Israeli people. So the next time someone tells you that Israel is an occupying force who is persecuting the poor people of the Gaza Strip, remember, Israel has actually helped those people so much, very likely to their own destruction. So bomb shelters at every corner, on every building, on every school, as well as a well-trained militia in the no man's land and billions of dollars on defense in order to track the missiles and rockets from a terrorist group next door. That is the price that Israel is paying right now for their jihadi neighbors, while the world, including the Saudi-controlled United Nations, tells them that it's them who has to clean up their act. For The Rebel.media, I'm Faith Goldie. If you want to hear the other side of the story when it comes to Israel, support our journalism by going to rebelisrael.com.